Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is episode 9 of my gameplay series on Wilhelmina Forest. If this is what you're looking for, please stay tuned. Alright folks, we are currently heading to... Well, we're heading up to the store so we can pick up our fuel trailer. Then we'll head over here, fill up the f the Fiat. I always want to call it the Fent, the Fiat with fuel because it's it's low as well. If you see down there, um, fill up the trailer, then head back in because we have the well. The tire cat is almost out of fuel. It's just I'm running on fumes. But uh, we cut grass last time, put it in the bunker silo. So hopefully we can sell silage today using our new ramp. And then we're gonna do a new crop today, which I am sure it probably was the thumbnail, but I'm still not gonna dis disclose it until we get there, just in case it's not, because last episode I almost disclosed it thinking it was gonna be the thumbnail, and I'm very glad I didn't. So <laughs> um, anyhow, yeah, that's what we got going on. Um, that's, that's yep, that's everything. Um, I'm gonna plan to put a field here yeah, I'm going to plan to put a field there. Now that we're stump free, thank goodness, I'm going to plan to put a field there. I might take out some more trees as I'm doing it because I might want to make the field a little bit bigger. But I know, yeah, I don't know. We'll kind of see. Because that I want it to be similar size to this, but obviously that's not going to fit right here. I need to get up to like right here. Um, I don't mind doing some more logging for the rest of today if that's what it ends up coming to. But uh, great demand of the spinnery. But uh, yeah, so... Yeah, it's just kind of where we're sitting right now. There's not a whole lot else going on. Um, we're just waiting on our... Oh, jeez. I need to fix up this road, too. And I need to finish the road in general. So that might be something I get done as well. I also am going to tell you guys a police story. I am so sorry. I was editing the last one. Oh, my goodness. And I, I realized I didn't tell anything. I'm just so used to doing No Man's Land where there's a police roleplay part that kind of like I just tell stories anyways because it's part of it. But... Uh, yeah, so that's my bad. I'm going to tell you guys a juicy story this one. Uh, I think I'll make it up to you guys hopefully in this episode. But uh, yeah, so I apologize for the last two. I was editing the last one. And I just completely realized that's why I put that note in there. If you hopefully you watch, I sometimes, I mean, I watch some YouTubers and I just kind of listen and glance over as I'm like playing, doing stuff off camera. Because uh, I don't have enough time in the day to watch every YouTuber I want to, play all the farming simulator I want to, spend time with my wife, um, <laughs> hang out with friends, do stuff around the house, go to work. So I kind of try to multitask, like I'll try to edit videos while I'm doing other stuff and everything like that. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think what else is going on. I'm recording this uh, way in advance. It's Friday the week before this comes out. This comes out, what, Wednesday? So this is last Friday. So um, a bit in advance. I'm trying to get ahead a little bit of the curve. Um, and I haven't gone even through, I'm going to probably, as I'm going through this episode, I'm going to go read all the comments that I got from the previous episode, episode eight, where we're taking out those stumps. So I'm going to go read through those comments as we're going, but, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think there's a lot of shout out, maybe not a lot of shout outs, a few shout outs. I have so many comments. I have like pages of comments written down, which is awesome of different things I should do. And I'm just trying to make sure I give you guys all the shout outs. Eventually the channel will get big enough where I won't be able to do that. Um, it'll just be kind of be like the first person that commented kind of wins. But anyhow, I'll still read all the comments and try to respond to all of them. And also there will be a point where it gets too big where I can't respond to all comments, but I still try to. Right now I spend probably on average anywhere from 30 minutes to, yeah, I would say probably 30 minutes a day, sometimes an hour a day responding to just, just responding to comments, just reading, responding, writing down the ones I want to know about and do stuff with. So it's a bit of work now and right now we're just over we're, I mean we're almost halfway through the 1700 subscribers and then we're going to be over the 2000 mark before we know it so which is fantastic everyone who's new to the channel thank you again for coming on here and as you probably already realized by watching some videos but I don't say it enough I am a full-time police officer in the state of Washington in the United States oops need to get that um so that's what I do full-time this is what I do as kind of a hobby but it's uh probably the funnest the, the funnest geez it's not a real word I'm sorry it's the most fun of a hobby you can have so anyhow um <laughs> let the fuel point get some fuel uh but yeah so i enjoy doing this quite a bit i enjoy putting out videos and stuff like that um i wish i had more time to do it in all honesty but I, there's just not enough time in the world to give me enough time to play fs the more i put out videos i feel like the more i kind of fall in love with the game and the more i like to play the game which is a, a good thing versus like oh, i don't like it as much you know because normally when I just play games by myself, I'll go in phases. Like, I'll play one game for, like, two or three or four hundred hours, like, for over the course of a few months. And then I'll be like, okay, yeah, I kind of, you know, tax myself out on that game. And then I'll switch to a different game. And then I'll tax myself out on that one. And I'll rotate back to my games. But, yeah, I don't know. I enjoy Farming Simulator the most. I think it's probably my favorite game. Um, as it probably is a lot of yours if you're on here watching. Maybe not. But, anyhow. I do play other games. I just don't, now that I have a YouTube channel, because I'd rather play 
on here. But, uh, okay, let's get the fence filled up. Oh, we're filling up the diesel. That's fine, too. There we go. Now we're getting the, the fence. I keep calling it the fence, darn it. It's the Fiat. The Fiat. The Fiat. The Fiat. The Fiat. Uh, all right. Well, that's, the Fiat is full. There, I finally got it right. Now we'll go ahead and fill up our, our tank there. Uh, so not too bad. I mean, I knew we'd spend a little bit of cash on fuel, but it's it's in it's gonna end up being worth it because we need we need it. So <laughs> there's no no way about it. But this is definitely a lot better. That I think doing this in the long run because if we don't do this, then it's gonna end up being us having to try to drag the tiger cat all the way over here to get fuel, which is gonna be that's a bit of a pain. I don't even know if I'll fill this all the way up. It's just a lot of well, I might as well. I'm here so um but yeah so i'm gonna look through some comments as i'm going through this um yeah that's what i got for you guys um my goal probably tonight is probably gonna be what i'll probably do today in game is probably just log some more is what i'll probably end up doing honestly um i do want to buy a uh, pedal was another person who said i should do this i think it was arna a and pedal and maybe a couple other people maybe j delusions um that said i should get a clamp so i'm gonna get a clamp i think today i think these guys have tension straps don't they don't they have tension straps or maybe some of them Maybe like that guy looks like he might have some tension. Oh, that's a that's a serious looking piece of kit there. Um, okay, those ones are also a lot more. But um, yeah, I think the large one that'd probably do good. But I might do that to load logs. I mean, I also might just buy. Well, maybe we just buy a bigger forestry trailer. Oof, yeah, let's go into here. Nope, is it not? Are they seriously all under? I keep forgetting that. I think they're all under here. Yeah, they are. Okay. Uh, the pup trailer, I get the long one, but I might do... I might do the short log trailer because this is like... Yeah, two batches of short logs, essentially, because then I could do that for long or short, kind of whatever I wanted to do. Um, I do need a dolly to go with it. So we don't have the cash for that right now. We're still filling up the fuel tank. You can see the money just dropping. Um, we don't have the cash for it, but that might be one of our purchases coming up because I think that'd be really good for us to have that. And then we can just hook that up with a dolly, load that up. I'm still going to use the, uh, I'm still going to use the tiger cast to load instead of loading it on the ground for now. So I probably won't get the clamp just yet, but those are kind of like future purchases looking at, um, looking at it from that direction. But, uh, holy cow, this thing is taking forever to fill up. But, uh, anyhow, I will see you guys in a little bit. I don't know when that'll be. It'll probably be tomorrow morning. My guess would be, I don't know what mod I'm going to throw in yet. I'm going to go read the comments before I throw in a mod, but I'm going to do some forestry today and then I'll see you guys in the morning. All right. It is morning on the farm. So uh, one more thing I'll mention about the, the where are mowers are dastardly. Here they are. So uh, I'm going to give them another shot at some point when we do grass again, um, someone commented, it was, uh, oh gosh, let me flip to him real quick. My comments, someone commented saying that you adjust them with your left, with the left mouse button. That was maybe, hold on, uh, Daywalker Makey. I'm pretty sure that was it. Yeah. Daywalker Makey. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Um, yep. That's good to know. Uh, <laughs> that'll be good to get that going. Um, and the F4 does work. I think I, I tried to activate something in the XML, which I think was what it was. I don't, unless I'm doing something wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's something with the XML that I need to adjust, um, that I thought I already did, but I guess I didn't do it correctly. So I'll have to look into that and fix it. Or it could have been, I updated something and it changed it, but, uh, we kept this overnight. So we did pay, I think it was 150 bucks or something overnight to keep it. So, um, that is fine. Um, I figured it'd be okay just because watch well, us check on our silage here because we're going to do some field creation today. hundred percent. Perfect. I think first things first though, we're going to see if we can't get all that junk out of the way there. So let's see if we can't get that knocked out. All right. And then I'll start getting the silage off. We have a lot of silage in there, so that'll be good money for us tonight. Ooh, yep, there we go. Loan is sitting at 400,000, but I got some money last night. I got $69,327 uh, last night from um, selling wood, so I was able to do a couple of good loads. Um, let's see if I can't get that chunk right there. Come on, you can do it. There we go. <laughs> it's not going to get it, is it? Oh, it's going to frustrate me. Oh, 
Well, let's try driving straight over it. But anyhow, we made $69,327 yesterday. That was just the login I did in the evening. Um, so that puts us up to a total made of $932,031. So we're about 70000 away from our next town upgrade. If we do want to do one. So, yeah, that'll be good to have that. Okay, well, that's that'll work for us, I guess. That just is what it is, I suppose. Um, we'll just dump that over here. It doesn't really matter where it's at. Just has to be out of the way. Perfect. And we'll just start loading from this side. Open it all up. Yep, and it theoretically should keep going. I've had some issues with that. It should keep opening up as you get through. I might have to get like a bucket or something yeah it should keep going but it's i've been having that issue or it just isn't opening past that which is frustrating <laughs> um so i think what i needed to actually just i think what causes that is it needs i mean the milling machine doesn't have that issue but i don't know why it doesn't open all the way back further Hmm, I'll play with it, but we might need to get might as well just buy it with you guys here I think we're just gonna get for the front loader. We're gonna get ourselves just a bucket just a small one We'll actually have the CSC package by a bigger one 2000 Well 2500 those will do 2500 everything um, Let's see well, I don't know maybe I'll just get one of the 2000s. I don't really need anything fancy on it Yeah, let's go for after bucket. That thing's pricey. Multi-purpose 2000. We'll buy that. That's fine. Um, the other thing we're going to buy too while I have you guys in here is we're going to buy a planter. Um, and I'm looking, so four and a half meters, six meters. Seed capacity 600 because it doesn't do fertilizer. That one only holds like 300, I think 360 is seed. So 600 in seed. It's a little wider and it's actually cheaper. So now, yes, we would want that if we want to do fertilizer and seeding at the same time, but we don't necessarily need to do that. So I think I'm just going to buy that guy. I think that's just the best. I mean, because what's the next one up? That one's six meters too. That one does do both without needing the tank, I think. But uh, yeah, so we're just going to buy that. Um, why are we going to buy it? Because we're going to use it. It's going to be worthwhile in the end. 26,000 really isn't that bad at the end of the day to have that. So we're going to buy that. I'm still not going to tell you what crop we're going to plant yet. Um, we'll get to that when we get there. But uh, I'll probably send the front loader in to go pick that stuff up. Well, actually, just to pick up the one thing, I guess. Huh? Because he can't hold hold the cedar. I mean, he can with his three-point adapter, but not if he's going to pick up a front loader bucket, too. So let's get him rolling to the store. Perfect, and then we'll send the Fiat in to go pick up the Cedar. Let's go ahead and send you to the store as well. And for the time being, I'll probably just use the case to start working on getting a field going. So get you going to the store. Send them on their way. And the Fiat can work on this when it gets back, but we're gonna wanna use the case for field creation anyways. Yes, yeah, so I should be able to crack that open the rest of the way with the bucket, I'm hoping. If not, it's a further glitch than that. Um, so we are going to use the, our subsoil there to make our field. Since we don't really want to buy something else. However, we don't need the cedar for this portion of it. So I know it kind of defeats a little bit of the, the, the niceness of it being able to seed and do it at the same time. But I really think this crop that we're going to do is going to be for the better for us. So let me go ahead and turn create fields on. Turn that back off. I think we're going to start the next... Actually, first off, what we really should do there... And I did landscape a road further down. I guess I didn't have you guys in for that. But let's go ahead and try some... We're going to save first. Auto saves off. We're going to save the game. And then we're going to go in here just because there's there's any landscaping disasters. You guys will want to be there for that anyways. So let me go... How much is that? That's nah, not too bad. That's a little much, I think. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. So I'm probably going to load back in because what I want to do, I guess while I'm in here, I could check for stumps too. But 
I need to turn that on. Let's go ahead and change strength, left control Q. Left control E. That makes it, okay, left control E makes it worse. Okay, or more powerful. Um, yeah, I know, I'm not, I'm just doing whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and reload it in. So that's what I'm gonna do. I will see you guys in a bit when we're probably starting to create fields, but I'll show you what I mean. I just wanna kind of smooth that out a little bit. I don't wanna change the train or flatten it by any means, but I wanna smooth a little bit more and smooth this road. So I think flatten this first part and then smooth the rest would be more ideal, I think is what I needed to do. So I will see you guys in a little bit. All right, so I loaded back in. I went and got the bucket here with this guy, and I actually bought us another pallet of seeds here just so we had some extra. So we got plenty of stuff sitting up here. This not only grabbed a little bit, I filled up the speeder, cedar, not the speeder, uh, full. So this guy's on his way back with that, and we're going to do some landscaping now, but I just wanted to get those going. Um, I loaded back in because I quit recording the other night when I was doing that first half, so I just, I was tired, so I went to bed. But uh, here I am a couple days later finishing up, hopefully. Um, okay, so let's go into landscape mode here. Um, and we need to just be careful. I'm going to turn that on. So yeah, I want to smooth this section out, I think. Just to, uh, that's... Yeah, I think that's probably good. So I can smooth that out. All right, let's get this... Uh, maybe just that big and then left control E we'll jack that all the way up as hard, far as we can and make sure I hit the smooth button okay all right let's get this bigger now we don't want to spend all of our money smoothing those are the areas you want to hit Making sure it's all the way up. And we'll check it here in a second. I don't want to hit our field. Smooth. Probably want to paint this as well. Eh, probably about that size. Yeah, that's the path. Oop, hit a little bit of the grass there. That's okay. A little bit of our grass field. Um, move that up along there. Oh, that's going to keep going probably for a while. And actually, you know what? I'll probably put a road between the two fields just to help kind of separate them out a little bit more. Just to show there's a difference here between the two of them. I think that's what I want to do. Yeah, I like that. Farm is slowly coming together. <laughs> okay, um... Yeah, I don't want to do anything. I seriously am considering making this a field, but I think I just want to leave it. I don't know. I don't know. It's a great spot for like buildings and stuff like that. We're not even going to worry about that right now. Let's make sure this is. Let's go back over to getting ready to smooth in case we need to. Um, just want to maybe get that a little bit more ironed out there. I know we've spent some good money doing this, but it's okay. It'll all work out. <laughs> It'll be worth it to have this at least semi-smooth when we actually go to make fields on it, I think. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. Okay, I think that's, for the most part, that's pretty smoothed out. Yeah, it's still on a hill, but that, that was kind of, we knew that was going to happen. At least I knew that was going to happen, so maybe lower that down just a little bit. So it's a little more gradual. Yeah, that's better there. Perfect. Okay, how much money do we have left now? 39. Okay, so we spent like five grand on that. That's not too bad. I'm not upset about that. Um, okay, so Fiat is probably, yeah, he's probably waiting to, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and turn him off so we're not getting billed by a worker. Uh, oh, of course. So corn is not the crop. I know it's down there. That's how it comes. <laughs> I'm not going to let you guys know what it is yet. I'm going to use the case to do that. So let's go ahead and get this guy. We did hold on to that fertilizer spreader overnight. See, if I repeat something, I probably mentioned that already in this episode. But if I repeat it, I'm sorry. Just uh, making sure I don't forget anything. So I'm going to leave that on. We'll go grab 
this guy. All right, perfect. And this should hopefully break down the... I'm hoping this works. Otherwise, we have a whole nother issue we got to deal with here. Yep, that does work. Okay, perfect. We're just going to go through... I guess that's not... <laughs> well, at least we can use that. So, we know, that's going to work. So, I'll just leave him off here on the side. And we will get the Fiat and fill that the rest of the way up. So, that'll work well for us. And we can always pick up the extra little sections and stuff with that loader there. So, that'll be helpful for us. Okay, there we go. You can do it. <laughs> There we go. There, now it's full. And we're probably just gonna have to back off. Let's actually, oh, we might be stuck. Great. This is kind of cheating. What can I say? That kind of really is cheating. Because <laughs> you wouldn't be able to do that in real life. That's okay. I could have gotten it out with the front loader if I really needed to, so I think that's okay. I'm fine with doing that. I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> All right, and this guy we're going to send to probably, I think, town on here, and then I'll get him at the BGA. I'll get him. Or I'll probably, I might, probably should just make a uh, a waypoint at the BGA, but he's going to go take care of that. And let's go hop in the case, and we're going to start our field. I'll kind of, I think I'll do the edges with you guys here. Um, shoot, what police story am I going to tell here? Let me, where's my notes? I had it all had it written down the one I wanted to talk about in my notes. Let me just go find that real quick. Oh boy. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Okay. Make sure I can read my handwriting too. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let me make sure field creation's allowed on this. Yes, let's do that. Okay. I'm gonna get started before I get distracted, and then after I after I get going on the field, then I'll probably I'll I'll be able to start talking about the police stuff here. Because if I don't if I do it before, then I'm gonna get yeah I'll have issues. But uh, anyhow, we'll do lower that down. Perfect. We'll do an edge along this road here, and then we'll go up that other side. Well, we'll do we'll just work our way around. I guess is basically all we're gonna do. Nothing crazy. So. Oh, the driver of the 1300 DT has reached out. So the Fiat is in town. The Fiat, right? Yeah, it's the Fiat. Turn the lights on. It's dark over here. Right about there's a good edge, I think. Make sure, yeah, that's pretty good right there. Okay. Back up around here. There we go. Lower that down. Perfect. So the... Sorry, I'm going to get going on the police story. So the police story I'm going to tell, I think it's pretty good. It's it's pretty funny. Um, kind of funny, kind of not. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's funny to me because it was just, just stupid what this person did. Um, so I work in a college town. I was on Creek Row, and this is actually when I was on field training. So I had another officer in the car with me. Um, so essentially when you're on field training as a police officer... Let me go up a little further. We'll get this field up to about here probably yeah we'll work our way down but when you're when you're when you're getting trained as a police officer so you go through the police academy this is at least how washington state works but you go through the police academy which is uh, 720 hours of training um yeah it's a long time <laughs> but uh in some countries there's like two-year schools you go to or schools you go to for a long time that the police academy is all it is and i get paid the whole time i'm there i get paid my full salary while i'm there well i get paid the lowest level of salary because i'm an entry level but that that all makes sense and seems reasonable <laughs> um and then I get a raise once I graduate the academy and I get put on the road as a I'm and essentially I'm in training at that point on the road now and I go to FTO which FTO is field training and, and you have an FTO with you which is a field training officer and they ride with you they grade you every day which is really stressful because <laughs> they're watching over your shoulder watching you do everything and yeah that's that's their job to kind of be there to add that extra stress and make sure you're doing the job correct it's kind of you know and I learned you learn a lot on FTO I'm not I'm not dog it on the program i think it's a fantastic program and i it should be there it shouldn't not be there it's it's amazing you need it but anyhow then you're on fto for three and a half months and you go through three different officers so you're with each officer 
for a month, and then you're with the first officer you're with, the officer you're with for the first month, and you go to them for what's called shadow phase, and you are in a car by yourself, and they follow you around in a different, like an undercover police car to make sure you're doing your job correctly, and they're in plain clothes, and essentially they follow you around in a different car, and they're, since it's your first FTO again, um, the same one that's watching you on shadow phase, they kind of make sure you actually learn something, and you're um you've actually improved like you're actually a safe police officer you're doing what you should do and there's some significant improvement from you know day one but uh so anyhow one day i was on fto i think i was in third phase so i've been on for a, a, a not a fair amount of time i should say i've been on for a bit you know i learned a lot of what i was going to learn um and i'm driving on this street on a specific block and i'm not going to say the street or the block or anything like that but uh i see a screen or a call pop up on the screen because i have a computer in my car and i see it and it's it's a malicious mischief call which if you're watching my other series you know we had the first call where we had the malicious mischief at the park in no man's land because i do police role play in no man's land so anyhow um, i see a malicious mischief call pop up and i look at the comments and it's it happens to be exactly on the right block and street that we're on and it's a report of a drunk male ripping a mirror off of a car and sure enough i look out my window and i see about a quarter of the way down the block i see a male um, that appears to be drunk trying to kind of work a mirror off of a car so i get out of my car with my fto my fto and i start walking up to him because fto goes with you everywhere and they're my fto is in uniform um for they're in uniform for the first uh, three phases but uh so we, we start walking up to him, and then this guy turns around he hasn't seen us yet because he's literally that drunk and we're only 20 feet or 30 feet away from him and this group of girls walks by um and he says the f word and then you so he says f you to this group of girls and then just decks one of them just shoves one of them the girl falls down to the ground so my and we weren't expecting that because like he was kind of like gently trying to pull the mirror off he just kind of seemed like he was being drunk and stupid he didn't seem aggressive at all so it kind of shocked us when he all of a sudden did that so um then out of nowhere we just um we essentially just bum rushed him. So I we slammed him into the car because he just attacked someone and threw someone on the ground. I was like, I don't know if he's gonna do that again. So we, we tackled him into the into the car and then put him on the ground. And then on the ground, he starts threatening to kill me. And <laughs> this is after we uh, wrestled him to the ground. He didn't put up much of a fight. He was very drunk and there's two of us. Um, I don't think I would have had any issues by myself with him. He was, I'm not like a really good fighter or anything. Like I'm okay, but I do what I need to do, but I'm not. I don't claim to be an expert at fighting or anything like that. I, I've gotten into a lot of fights as a cop um, just because that's part of the job. There's people that like to resist or like to fight, um, and they're mostly drunk people. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, so uh, it wasn't much of a fight. We get him on the ground. It's over quickly. He's in handcuffs quickly, and he's on the ground. And we're getting ready to sit him up, and then he starts telling me he's going to you know, kill me. And the first time he told me he was going to kill me, I mean, he's on the ground in handcuffs, and we defeated him in a matter of seconds. So I actually laughed at him because I, I knew there was no way he could do any harm to me in the position he was in. And he didn't even comprehend that I laughed at him because he was so he was so intoxicated. So I didn't charge him with uh, threatening a law enforcement officer. I probably could have, but it doesn't really help if you laugh because I'm not really in fear then that it's going to be carried out. So I wasn't too worried that he was going to be able to do anything to me. But uh, anyhow, so yeah, that was kind of a crazy story that happened. Some that's just that's some of the things that happen. That's some of the stuff you see. Um, I've gotten in a foot pursuit with people that have, I've seen them, we've been out at different calls on Greek Row, and I've seen drunk people just hop on the hood of our patrol car, leaving big old dents in them, and then they take off running. And then we chase them down, tackle them, and arrest them. It's like, you can't do that. Oh, but they're college kids too. They're going to do stupid stuff. It is what it is, you know. I don't really hold any grudges against them. They're doing stupid stuff. I'm not there to hem them up. But sometimes if they're doing stuff that's just a little over the top, they got to be put in a jail cell for a little bit of time get a criminal citation and get booted out but uh yeah i've had people too that i've arrested they were so intoxicated when i arrested them that when i let them out they had no idea like when i went and contacted them later they had no idea after they sobered up a bit no idea why they were in jail like no they were so concerned and confused like what did i do i'm like well you did this i had one person i was like well you actually assaulted me and you you fought with me and that's why you're in jail is because you attacked me and they're like what they're just completely different people when they sober up because alcohol some people are angry drunks and they just that's what it is but oh man that was a good one the guy that was uh like i assaulted you i'm so sorry officer and started crying i'm like it's okay i don't hold it against you it's just please please don't drink that much in the future where you're assaulting people and me but uh oh man that's a big part of it too i don't hold any grudges against anyone that i've ever arrested people are people we all make mistakes sometimes you just have to pay the the price for them it is what it is you know I've had lots of people too that thank me for arresting them. Like they said, thank you because I, I treat people like people. I treat people like they deserve to be treated. People are people regardless of they're in handcuffs or not. They're people. 
So I've had people thank me when I arrest them because they're like, you're the nicest cop I've ever been arrested by. And you know, these are people that have been arrested multiple times. And I, I always tell them, well, thank you. I'm, that's, I don't try to be mean to you, you know? As soon as you stop, if, if they're resisting or whatever the case may be, or there's a fight, as soon as it's over, it's over, you know? We're cool. It's it, There's nothing. If you if you get hemmed up about that and you get angry about people that fight you all the time and stuff like that as a cop, you're probably in the wrong line of work. You just kind of have to learn to let things go, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's my advice, I think, for a lot of things. If you just kind of let some things go and let things slide and be more laid back, I think a lot of good will come out of it. So, yeah. Um, I always encourage that. I think in a lot of this, I, I've been to a lot of calls where people don't let things go and that's kind of why it escalated or why it got to where it did. Um, so forgiveness and moving, letting things move in the past is a big deal, um, I think, personally. But uh, anyhow, that's my rant and my my thing of the day. So, yeah. And that's the same thing too. I'll say when, when I, like, I give out like traffic tickets, I don't write a lot of tickets. So I stopped last year in 2019, I stopped over, a th I, or not over a thousand, I almost stopped a thousand cars. In addition to responding to calls, I think I stopped a thousand cars and arrested 260 people in 2019, which that's that's a lot, by the way. I, and that was just because I was super proactive. I go out and I actually go look for stuff and I do stuff. But I mean, most of the crimes I got, I arrested people for were super minor stuff. And a lot of times I didn't actually take them to jail. I just gave them a citation or I said, hey, I'm just going to forward charges on into the prosecutor because that's stuff that we're expected to take action for. So I just kind of, you just do stuff like that. But no, but anyways, going back to my traffic stops, out of stopping almost a thousand cars, I only wrote 112 tickets, 112. Most people got warnings and I educated people because sometimes people just don't know or they miss the speed sign or whatever. I mean, if they're going 20 over, I can't really ignore that. I kind of have to write a ticket, right? But if they're going 10 over and they miss the speed sign, I just try to educate them like, hey, just don't do it again, you know? Um, that's just a big deal for me is education because every time I pull someone over or I arrest someone, it's like that's an interaction that I have as a police officer with someone in my community. And I think it's important to... Um, I mean, even more important now in the world we live in now, it's like that's important to make that a positive reaction. So um, that's a big deal to me. And my, my department has body cams too, which I really love. Uh, love having body cams because I've gotten complaints that have been just complete, you know, garbage that people are like, oh, this officer did this. And they look at my body cam like, well, no, nothing happened that you said. So um, <laughs> um, I, I do like my body cam quite a bit. I activate it all the time. It's almost always on. Um, but anyhow, I don't know where I'm going with that. Well, no, back to my tickets. So even out of those 100 tickets, probably 80% of those people I issued tickets to, and you can't appease everyone. Some people are just going to be mad no matter what you do. But out of those tickets, I think about 80% of them, the people thanked me at the end. They said, thank you, officer. And I was like, that's the, that's where I'm trying to get. If someone can thank me for giving them a ticket, that means I'm doing my job the best I possibly can. I don't expect that every time, but if that's if that's what I'm getting the majority of the time, I think I'm doing it right because I'm I'm you know and I don't give unreasonable tickets. I'm like oh you know your left uh, left rear brake light there was out, so I decided to write you a ticket today. No, it's like hey your left rear brake light's out. Go ahead and get that fixed so people can see you better on the road. You know that's usually my approach. Now if I stop if they've been stopped ten times before because we keep track of all of our warnings, then it's like okay sorry you know you've had three months to fix it. You've been warned ten times. It's like I have to give you a ticket now. But even then, I've probably written one ticket for a brake light, like one, and it was because of that situation. I've written one ticket for a headlight out, and those are the only equipment violations I've ever written people for. All my other violations were for, like, completely blowing stop signs, for running red lights, for speeding. You know, I usually, it's like, I try to kind of consider the, uh, the severity of what they're doing you know what's the what's this what's the issue to public safety oh and the other one that i write that has nothing to do with public safety but is more of like a procedural thing is i do write if they have tabs that are expired more than two months it's like okay you gotta get your tabs renewed but uh yeah so that's a big one that i that i, that I have to write for or that i'm ex it's not it's not a requirement i'm not legally required to but it's one of those things that's like a department expectation that you should be writing people for so anyhow regardless of that that is what i got my rant we're almost done with this field and my rant is over now i think so uh i'm gonna go ahead and get this field done and i'm gonna get some of the silage sold off to the bga and then i'll bring you guys back in in a bit all right we are down here at the store so not much time has passed um Another load of silage. He's heading back now. Um, I loaded out and loaded back in because I added our mod of the day. So down here, there's no weeds. Uh, fertilizer. I fertilized that one state um, after I finished the field. Um, it doesn't need plowing, obviously, because a, a uh, subfiller, so it should be fine for that. But it does need lime, and I don't want to lease a lime spreader because we go to the store and we go to where are we at here? 
fertilizer technology. The cheapest one is going to be that guy, and that's two grand a lease at the cheapest configuration. So this is our mod of the day. This guy right here, it does lime and fertilizer. Um, the big deal for us though is the lime. So I can now lease this for 714 bucks and quickly knock our lime out, which I think I am gonna do. That's not, that's, I thought that was gonna be cheaper than that, but uh, whew, I mean, we're committed now. So we're gonna lease that. Yes, and that gives us two things out leased right now, which is still within our limits. And then we're hopefully gonna build a lime just fine with this. Um, I think this thing burns through it pretty quick, but uh, I mean, anything's gonna burn through lime pretty quick, so. Oh, I didn't wanna get fertilizer. Turn it. Well, let's go ahead and load up that, then I'll unload it as one group instead of have multiple things sitting around so yeah we're gonna i'm gonna take this back we're gonna lime this field over here and then i'll bring you guys back in for to show you what we are gonna plant so i'll see you guys in a little bit all right it is time and i'm now pretty confident it's gonna be the thumbnail but anyhow uh we are gonna plant sugar beets now you might say why on earth would you do sugar beets i'll explain so the reason for doing sugar, oh, by the way, I hired a worker here to do the fertilizing and no issues. So I don't think there's any stumps here, which is amazing. So anyhow, no stumps, hopefully. Now that I said that, I'll find 10 of them. But uh, anyhow, um, so the reason being, if we go into our menu here, sugar beets sell at the BGA for 450. Now I could have done potatoes. Potatoes are a little bit more spe specialized because you need a specialized planter. Um, and their yield is usually a little bit lower than sugar beets and sugar beets are, and potatoes pay out the same So sugar beets I think are the most economical for us and our planter can be used for all sorts of different things as well So I think this is a, a good way for us to start off. It's a small plot of land So we're not gonna get a high yield of anything else and honestly if we go into well if we go into the store to do like a grain crop 27,000 plus the cheapest harvest, no, not forage harvester. The cheapest harvester is 84. So we're looking at just over 100,000, right? Um, if we go over to sugar beets, it's not that much more to do a sugar beet setup here. So 22 and 98, that's 120, about the same um, to do sugar beets if we want to go that route. So I think it's just kind of a better option. Now, I thought there was a, maybe it's under here. I thought there was a, it must just be a potato thing then. Yeah, I was thinking there was one of these for sugar beets, but I guess I was wrong on that. But anyhow, regardless of that, um, how much does that hold? Probably 6,000? Yeah, 6,000. So regardless of that, that's set up there, and we can lease them for the first harvest if we don't have the cash sitting in the bank. Uh, but I think we're going to end up buying them eventually because leasing these, five grand for that, and what is this, a grand or two? Yeah, grand. So uh, no big deal there. It's like six grand. It'll probably only take us an hour to get all the sugar beets harvested off of um a field this size so i think that's just kind of a, a good option for us i think to start out i think that'll be a good way for us to make some extra cash i do think that's cool that has wheels on that i've never really paid attention to that but that's pretty cool anyhow so i think it'll be a good way for us to make some extra cash and i know this setup isn't necessarily designed this way but uh sugar beets a good way to yeah just to, to get us boosted into the next kind of level um well he's working on that i'm probably going to honestly i'm going to keep doing four actually i'm going to get the silage the rest of the way let's jump over here real quick how much silage do you have left in there i just sent the guy to the bg i think he's up there now yes he is he's waiting for me um how much silage do we have even left in here Twenty-two thousand. okay so i have two more loads essentially left um one will just be kind of a partial load but uh anyhow top up there so this has been working great the uh the ramp works really well for us so i'm pretty happy about that and this uh digester works really fast as you can see on the screen maybe on the left hand side it says zero so um it's digesting it basically as fast as we're getting it in there which is great so pretty stoked about that <laughs> um i do want to show how much we're making on the silage in this episode um and the bga income i think shows up on the next day so it'll show up on the screen on the next day so it'll get counted on the profit for the next days but i think today have we made any money today no we haven't so if i sell some logs which i'll probably end up doing some logging just because um, i'll have some time at the end of the day today to do that or a little bit since it's almost, it's almost one o'clock in game but uh so let me get this guy back to the farm so that's kind of what i'm set up doing i'm gonna get where are we at get this planted and then i'm gonna get the fertile i'm gonna well by the way i returned the lime spreader so the lime spreader is returned i'm gonna get this planted then i'm gonna add a second fertilizer state using our least fertilizer spreader and then i'm gonna return that 
And then I will hop over here and I will start working on getting some more stuff cleared out um, on the forestry side of things. Ideally, my goal would be um, I would keep clearing back here and maybe get to like that cliff, maybe just across the top to there. And then I would extend this field out that way. Um, and obviously we'll just keep doing grass and silage off of this section here. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the goal. I mean, I probably could make more money if I just did this as, I don't know, the silage pays out what, 360? That's probably, you might even make more doing, well, yeah, 360. I mean, you might even make doing more doing grass since grass is a much higher yield, obviously. But, uh, but then again, with the sugar beets, it's a crop. We're working on a crop now and it's just... We don't have to bunker silo it or anything. We can just sell it directly to the BGA and it's a fixed price. So the price we don't have to ever worry about holding on to it or storing it. We can just sell it directly. Now we are going to have to look at probably buying a trailer. And I, I'm just, that's going to be a tough one. Getting kind of a good entry level trailer. It might end up being, I don't really like the swivel axle though. That one's not a bad one. Must be 700. Oh, it's a weight. That hooks up to a weight. I guess it hooks up. To, okay, I guess the the weights have connectors on it. But anyhow, uh, thirty one thousand. That's a pretty good trailer there. We might end up trying to get that. We'll have some money hopefully soon. Our goal would be to make some extra cash off a of forestry today. I mean, obviously the sugar beets are probably not even going to be ready to harvest tomorrow. We probably have tomorrow, and then the next day after that they'll be ready to harvest since we have plant growth on slow. Um, yeah, so that might just be. Yeah, I'm not too worried about it. We'll get it figured out, but uh, that's kind of where we're sitting. I'll probably wrap this episode up um, probably tomorrow will be my guess because I want to see what we make off of the silage. So I'm going to get that planted the rest of the way, get it fertilized, like I said, and I'm going to keep kind of going with the plan. So I will see you guys likely in the morning or in the evening tonight, but I think probably I'll just wait until the morning. I'll let you know when I made off of logging in the morning as well. All right, folks, I just woke up. It is 6.57. Rain is coming. But that's okay. We're probably just going to be logging today. Um, so the money has gone up. Yesterday, we did $89,000 in logs. And we got $43,948 in the BGA. So pretty good. Um, I will note, I did make one purchase. I bought a weeder because weeds popped up on our... Uh, sugar beet field so i did buy us a weeder instead of i figured that would just be a better option um than going down because always we'd have to have something like this and then we'd have to spray fertilizer or excuse me spray herbicide that's the only way there's that's just kind of your option so i decided that'd just be a better investment and it'll be cheaper in the long run since we're using a piece of equipment to weed so i bought just the cheapest one uh the pneumatic star Pneum pneumatic star pneumatic star by einbach uh, so that was 18 grand. So not a big deal. Super cheap. Um, what? You can plant with this? That's kind of cool. Hopefully I didn't plant anything. Hopefully we still have sugar beets in our field. Yeah, we do. Okay. <laughs> it shouldn't because I... There's no capacity for that though for seed, right? That can't hold seed, can it? No, it'd be like something you'd do with like... Oh, it can. Wow. I guess there is kind of that setup there. That's kind of funny. I didn't know that. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> I guess technically we didn't need the cedar then because we could have done grass with that. But anyway, it all works out. That was 18 grand. Um, so I also paid off. Oops, I'll go into here. I also paid off 50,000 off the loan. We were at negative 400,000 there. So now we're down to 350. And I think I'm actually just going to pay off another 50. So we're sitting at 46 now. We bought a weeder and we're looking good. Um, so I'm thinking. I'm thinking when we get to doing sugar beets, which might will probably be the next episode, in all honesty. Um, I'm thinking we can... I'm thinking we'll be able to buy those. I, th I think there's no way... There's no reason we shouldn't be able to buy those. I mean, it's 120 grand, but that'll be worth it. So we need to do 70,000 in uh, essentially logging today. And I'll, so, I'll show you what I what I got done as far as like logging goes yesterday. I got a fair amount uh, done, actually. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and then actually, yeah, let's take a look. The grass isn't quite ready to harvest yet. The beets are in, are they in that one? No, they're in the second one. They're in the second one, but anyhow, they're growing nonetheless. I know they're not gonna be ready today, but tomorrow they should be ready. The grass actually will probably be ready tonight, would be my guess. That's the other thing too. Yo, the beets are popping up. Yep, that's cool. That is fantastic. Sorry, I'm whispering. I hope you guys probably had no idea. I said that was fantastic if you didn't hear me um let's go in the store again so the other thing i'm thinking about 
Yeah, we might. I mean, 3,200. That guy does spread really well, which will save us a lot of money. We might actually buy that. Um, yeah, we might buy that. It's a grand more. It holds more. I think it's a better option. So we may end up buying that for fertilizer purposes. Um, since we're going to need that for the grass when we harvest the grass. Yeah, lime we're not going to need for a while because the sugar beets, once we do three harvests, we'll have to plow every time. But because uh, sugar beets get the plow, if we go into the menu, if you didn't know this was all down here. Because uh, let's go down to plowing. Should be down here, right? Um, uh, tillage. Oh, it's under sugar cane. Nope, it's probably back up here at the top. Oh, yeah, it was there. Jeez. Plowing. Um, proving yield. Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, plow after corn, potatoes, sugar beets, and sugar cane. Otherwise, negative 15%. So we'll need to plow every time after sugar beets and then, yeah, weeds 20%. I thought they were only 15%, so that's good to know. Spread lime every three harvests, so we should be good there. And then, ooh, that's... I, see, I need to read this more. I thought I thought these were all 15 across. I knew about that 15. I thought that was 15, so I'm glad we got rid of the weeds. Um, and I thought that was only 15 each, so that's great. That we're getting plus 50% essentially each time. That's plus 15%. So essentially we're getting 65% bonus and we're not getting these negatives. So... Um, these essentially just avoid a negative. It's not a 65 plus a 20 plus a 15. No, it's just these don't get subtracted. And these are bonuses. So, um, yeah, 65%. That's amazing. To avoid a 35% malice. Yeah, we're doing good. But uh, I think that's important for us as far as keeping track of stuff and uh, making, um, I don't know, just taking care of our crops and making sure they're good to go. But uh, So I have just been loading it onto the trailer, still not in the ground. I haven't gotten a clamp or anything like that. Today we do get a mod, so... Um, Oh, the other thing too, with yesterday, with getting $89,214, that put our total earnings, which just is crazy to me. I feel like we should have more stuff, but we have made $1,021,245, which means we have now gotten to our fourth town upgrade that we can do at any point. And I need to finish up the roads because I haven't, they're still not smooth or anything like that. I will get to those eventually. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. We're doing pretty well. But yeah, I cleared out quite a few trees here. I don't know. I might start heading that way, but I think I'm going to keep this road going straight. Um, ideally, I'd like to expand, extend the, uh, excuse me, the uh, sugar beet field. Again, I'd like to extend it out quite a bit further. I don't know how far we are from the kind of cliff section up here. can't imagine we're that far. Let's hit right here. Yes. Okay, so here's a cliff section. So we're that far. So if we go into the map, yeah, I guess that's a that's a lot of actually forestry. That's almost this whole field, but we've cleared up to about here, I think. So we have this much to clear to get that and we still have this down here if we wanted to do stuff with it. Um we may end up clearing some of this event. We'll probably clear out some of it or at least thin the trees out through here. Um but yeah, getting this up here is important to clear. As far as our land that we own, I mean, we have a lot of land. So yeah, we'll have more fields up here and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of interesting. I just, I don't know if we'll ever, I don't know, if, like for now, obviously our little, our headquarters for a farm is down here just right off the bridge, but eventually it might just be that there's a, a road that comes up here and then, you know, fields branching off. I'm not sure how it's all going to go. Um, I'll probably end up making a road along there. I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Because um, some of this, actually this area right here is really great for fields. It's pretty smooth. I'm pretty sure that's the area I'm looking at or thinking about. Um, yeah, that area right there is really good for fields, I'm pretty sure. But this here gets start to get a little hilly, a little mountainy, or a little mountainous, I think is the right mountainous. Yeah, mountainy, mountainous, mountainous, I think is more accurate. Um, but yeah, so it's going to get a little tricky, and you can see there's some ridges in here too. This looks like a nice area for a field up there. It looks pretty smooth. Um, so yeah, we'll take a look at some of that stuff, but that is, uh, I think everything I have for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you did drop a like down below, if you have not already, please hit that subscribe button up on your screen to join the channel and then turn on your notification bell. So you don't miss any future videos that I may post. And again, oop, that is super loud. Um, oh, that's right. I, I did this in here. Yep. There we go. Anyhow, <laughs> with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the keep. Uh, dropping comments down to help me out. I really appreciate it. I'll give some more shout outs in the next video. So thank you guys. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you for coming and watching.